Greetings. This presentation covers Epicor Eclipse ERP rebate contract setup and use. Rebates. There are all kinds of rebates that you might be subjected to, or special pricing authorizations as they're often referred to. Uh, the most common type of rebate is when a vendor allows for reduced uh, purchasing costs on specific subset of items in their product line when they're sold to specific customers that you service, typically your high volume customers that might be working on large projects. Uh, items are brought into stock at the normal purchasing cost and on a monthly or quarterly basis depending on who you're dealing with. A rebate claim must be submitted to the vendor in order to receive a credit for the items that were sold to the specific customers. Uh, vendors love doing this kind of stuff because it's uh, normally a huge pain in the ass to keep track of and they're hoping, hoping honestly that you don't do it and they get to look like princes because they offered this wonderful deal and you feel like an asshole because you didn't actually keep up with the paperwork to make good on it. Well, the joke's on them because Eclipse actually has a pretty good system in there for keeping track of this rebate information for you. Uh, although there's a little bit of work on the front end to set it up, once you've got it in place, it's slick as a whistle and you don't have to worry about it and you get your money and haha on the vendor. Rebates are essentially a pricing matrix with uh, additional information added for good measure. Um, so it's going to override uh, ex existing price matrices that you have in place um, and do their magic. The pricing matrices are centered around customers or classes of customers and then specify a particular uh, set of products or a, a group of products and then they do their little formulas and outspits the magic price and in the case of a rebate it's going to uh, spit out the uh, costing difference so you can do your rebate claim as well. So the rebate starts out as a customer record. Uh, the reason why is, I mean, you can create a pricing matrix uh, around a specific customer record, um, but then if you want to apply it to several different people, it can get confusing. So typically what we do is we create a customer record specifically just to be a contract and nothing else, and then we'll apply that rebate and or contract uh, to other customer records uh, so that we can manage it a little bit better. So here we have a simple uh, customer record that we're creating uh, for our rebate in order to, to build our matrix around this and uh, come up with a standard naming convention. In my system I use uh, ACON dash something for contracts and AREB dash something for rebates. Uh, and that's how I keep track of it, but you know, your your tastes and styles may vary. I just, you know, it makes sense to come up with some naming conventions so that the contracts and rebates don't get mixed in with all the other com customer records in the, in the alphanumeric scale of things, so they're easier to find. And this is just, uh, this is just a standard generic customer bill to record uh, it's going to have the no order entry uh, flag set on it so that no one at the counter can accidentally try and do a sale against a, a uh, contract or rebate record. So as I said, this is just, uh, this is just something to hang the, the pricing matrix around. Once you create the uh, rebate customer record, now you can actually go into the quick sell matrix. Uh, if you wanted to, and specify that particular customer, and of course the quick sell matrix will show you this, that there's nothing there, that the matrix has not been, con been constructed yet. Uh, at this point, if you were a sadomasochist, you would enter in all of the rebate information and all of the parts and all the selling information manually, one at a time, line by line by line, and I guarantee you this would be very, very long and you'd hate life and bang your head on the desk until your forehead was flat. Uh, luckily, there is an easier solution. Eclipse provides a utility for uploading the rebate information uh, automatically instead of having to put the information in um, manually. Uh, and of course, Eclipse, in their usual standard uh, way of doing things, 
uh, they put in this massively useful tool, then try not to tell anyone about it, not do any documentation on it, uh, obscure all possibility of finding it by accident, make it so convoluted you couldn't possibly trip across how to make the damn thing work uh, <laughs> by yourself, and hope that you spend $275 an hour for training uh, so that they can go, oh, by the way, this is in here. Uh, I find that annoying, so <laughs> we're going to step across several of those steps and go the other way around. Anyway, so you start off with your spreadsheet. You're going to be getting odds are a spreadsheet from your vendor. This is going to give you some of this information, and you're going to have to take that and cut and paste and and slash and dash and come up with this. This There is a lot of information you can put into a rebate. What I'm showing you here is the bare minimum of what you would need to come up with a functional rebate because once again I'm try not to be a sadomasochist so there's no sense in giving you more information than you absolutely have if you want to be more creative and add more stuff then by all means do uh, read the manual <laughs> uh, good luck anyway so uh, take a look at this spreadsheet and how it's put together uh, to review so you get some idea of the basic information that you need here. What we're doing is essentially we're creating a contract but it's got dual sides on it so it's uh, coming up with a sell price matrix so the customers that are going to be assigned to this rebate uh, when they buy these parts are going to get this hard dollar selling price which is going to be fairly typical you wouldn't normally use formulas on this and then at the same time when they buy that and get that price then the system is going to over override the costs uh, of the thing uh, calculate the margins and commissions properly uh, to incorporate the the rebated uh, selling cost or purchasing cost excuse me and eventually it'll keep track of all of that stuff for you to later on run a report um, now keep in mind when looking at this spreadsheet that my uh, bases uh, are different names than what you're likely to have in your system. So you know, look look up and find whatever your uh, costing bases are on your system to do the spreadsheet correctly. Uh, if you're not familiar what uh, with what um, price bases are, well, um, take a look at some of the other uh, presentations that I have, and it should cover that. Once you've created your rebate spreadsheet according to the parameters in the previous example, uh, then you'll want to export this into a CSV format. Uh, keep in mind, uh, as, as mentioned in the previous slide, that the uh, customer ID and vendor ID uh, that I have here is unique to my system, so when you construct this, your uh, IDs are going to be different, so <laughs> don't use my IDs. I, of course, also am not psychic, I do not know what your vendor spa uh, rebate number is going to be so you'll have to put in, in your specifically uh, anyway after you have uh, constructed this spreadsheet you do a file save as and select ms dos csv file format and then you get this uh, now typically to make things a little bit easier uh, i will go ahead and open up the exported file in notepad and confirm that I haven't screwed something up in the spreadsheet and added extra columns or changed the formatting and made things not quite right. And uh, it all looks nice and pretty. And uh, uh, of course, also take out the header information because this is, uh, might cause issues. Um, be very careful when you're putting uh, in the numbers and you're doing the exports. Um, you, it may put in a comma. Uh, in the uh, the number, say like you know, 1,500, you might get one comma 500 period zero zero, and that's not going to work a at all. When you go to do the import, it it'll chop things up and mangle it. So when you do the export, you uh, you'll want to format that pricing column to make sure it doesn't put a comma in there in the in the dollar value separator. Anyway, so here in our examples, this is what you should be looking at for a usable uh, exported uh, rebate spreadsheet file. Once you've confirmed that your export file from Excel is correct uh, in its format and ready to go, now you need to import it into Eclipse. 
Now keep in mind that this utility I'm talking about only works in E-Term. It doesn't work in Solar, as almost <laughs> all the important stuff doesn't. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so you'll go into E-Term, you'll go into your hold file, your uh, uh, spooler control, and you'll do a uh, Alt-U for a file upload. And then, of course, it'll bring up the little uh, window here to uh, hunt around on your local hard drive, find your exported uh, uh, CSV format file, uh, select it, and uh, do, do the next thing. Eclipse in the Universe database require a unique name of the data that's being imported in so it can keep track of it and do the things it needs to do. And that's what this enter spooler title thing is all about doesn't really matter what name you give it, just give it something unique, identifiable, or memorable so the scripts can do their magic. Once you enter the spooler title and hit enter, then you're going to see the uh, file uh, byte count click up as it uh, uploads into the uh, Eclipse system. And when it's done, it'll tell you the number of bytes that uh, it uploaded, and it'll beep at you annoyingly. Then you can just hit enter. It's always a good idea to view the data once it's been uploaded to make sure that uh, one final eyeball at it, make sure you didn't screw something up and uh, format this wrong. Uh, at this point, it's not processed, it's just been uploaded, so if you mess something up, you can go back to the original spreadsheet, clear things up, and do another upload. Once you're through viewing the data for correctness, uh, you'll hit escape, of course, and while your cursor is still on the uh, uploaded file, which I, I assume it wouldn't have moved at this point unless you were doing something else and got disrupted, uh, go ahead and hit Alt-R for process, and then in processing type in, select User Defined Matrix Upload, and Alt-B to begin. You'll have to specify a file importing template uh, before you can go any further. And this is just, uh, just a formatter it tells uh, the system what uh, uh, formatted columns of data from the file that you've imported maps to what fields in the uh, appropriate database for the matrix. Um, if you don't have one already to specify, then you'll uh, select new and create a new one. Once you've given your new template a name, then go ahead and set the effective and expiration dates. These are important to have these dates right because for some idiot reason this, these dates in the template will override the dates that are set in the file. Uh, even though you still have to have those columns in the file or else the darn thing won't work. Uh, after that, you do Alt-F and you'll have to specify the uh, file format uh, in order for the template to work. And in this setup, uh, record type variable uh, and the delimiter character is C for uh, comma. The next thing we'll want to do is enter in the element numbers in our import template. Uh, this is going to map the columns of information in the imported data uh, to the appropriate fields in the rebate matrix. Uh, the starting position for this is 1, so as we can see here in our example data from the spreadsheet, the UPC code, which is the the uh, identifier that's going to be necessary for all of these products uh, is going to be position 1 or element 1 in the sheet. Uh, notice my example here, the columns of information and the elements that are in the template. This is the minimum that's required, so don't skimp. Make sure that you enter these element mappings correctly as you see. Once you have the import template all set up, uh, save it and Alt-B to begin, and usually you'll get a processing complete uh, almost immediately. Once you've run your process and escaped out of it and you're back in your spooler control, if there were any records that failed uh, from the import, uh, you'll see the failed matrices report and you can go ahead and view it and see uh, which records failed. It'll tell you which line number from the source data and, of course, it's showing me uh, the element 1, the UPC11 code, which they love to call the product number in this particular case anyway, uh, so I can hunt down what went wrong and fix it. Uh, you can correct the spreadsheet if that's what's necessary, uh, upload it again, and rerun this process as many times as you want. It won't do any damage. It'll just 
overwrite the last thing with the with whatever the latest thing was uh, until you get it right. Or if the errors that you incurred are not critical and you want to go forward, then you can leave it as it is. So if we go back into the quick sell matrix for this rebate, we see it's no longer empty. We've actually got some products in it and and our information as necessary. Now with a rebate contract, it's got uh, two different sides to it, right? Because we've specified what the selling price of the part is to the customer. And we've also specified what the overrided cost uh, is for the rebate claim for the vendor. Uh, so usually by default, when you get in the quick sell matrix, you see it in sell price view and you can check and confirm that that information is correct. Then if you'll click on the little hourglass and you'll go ahead and select your, your uh, costing information, then you can take a look at the cost override view uh, and make sure that that information is correct on that side. Once you confirm that the rebate information went in correctly in the quick sell matrix, now you can go ahead and assign the rebate contract to the appropriate customers that this applies to. Now, if you've got a customer that's got uh, existing bill tos and ship to jobs as well, you have to put in the contract for the bill to and all of the ship tos. If there are no existing jobs, or they do create existing jobs after this point, uh, and the contract is assigned at the bill to at the creation time, Eclipse will go ahead and pull over the contract as well. So just keep that in mind. If you've got exist existing ship twos, you can't just put the contract in the bill to, you got to put them in the ship twos as well. Here we have an example sales order and we can see that uh, as we add the items that were in the rebate and assigned to this customer, to the sales order, if you look at the unit price, you'll see a little plus sign on the corner of it, and that denotes that this pricing didn't come from the normal matrix, but came from a contractor rebate. And if you change the view via the little hourglass thing, if you have access to these other views and select audit pricing, you'll see uh, more confirmation that these prices are coming from contracts and not from the normal pricing matrix. So once we've got all this in place, when the appropriate time comes, we can go ahead and run our customer sales rebate report, uh, which you can see here in this location on the solar menu. Um, here I'm just putting in the basic parameters uh, and using the default template uh, for the example. Uh, fairly straightforward date range, vendor, price line involved. And here's an example of the default report and some of the information contained in it. Uh, as you can see with, with all reports that you run in Eclipse, uh, you see in the blue highlighted uh, invoice numbers, uh, those are links. If you click on it, it'll actually open up the original sales order so you can see uh, the item that was made up in the rebate and what else was in there as well. Now, odds are you're not going to want to use the default template uh, of information to send off to the vendor because there's some sensitive information as well. So you'll probably want to be able to create uh, uh, templates and probably several templates because vendors are buggers and each one usually seems to want a different set of information. So uh, you'll go ahead and go through this process here, report column selection, uh, creating new templates or altering the company template and adjusting the columns and headings as necessary. And that way when you run the rebate report and you select that template, uh, you'll get a format that's much more ready to send to the vendor. And then of course you'd go ahead and you'd uh, export the file out in spreadsheet format, clean it up a little bit and send it off. And hopefully uh, your check is in the mail. And this concludes our presentation on vendor rebates in Eclipse, the easy method, at least if you ask my opinion. I hope this information will prove useful to you and at least cause more answers than questions. Thank you for your attention, and as always, I am not Scott Zahn.